Hello. Oh, hang on a minute. Let's get myself up on. No, I didn't want to do that. Uh -huh. There we are. If I do that, and there. Oh, hi there, everyone. I'm just going to find us on Facebook because I forgot to open it. And I can just check that everything is all looking okay. How is everyone? Can you all hear me okay? Hi, everyone. Hi, Mum. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Suzette from Canada. Oh, it's lovely for you to tune in. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Dawn. Hello. <laughs> by the way oh good sound is okay hi pat hi helen hi donna okay that's looking like that's all working loud and clear oh brilliant thanks connie hi antonia hi marjorie hi hazel actually my hazel's been quiet i wore her out this morning i took her for a walk it was freezing cold this morning God, you know, when you start off your walk, it's usually cold. But by the time you get walking, a couple of minutes in, you've warmed up and whatever. I didn't this morning. It was so cold and I forgot my hat. So I shall have to go and dig that out for later on. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day. So I didn't mind too much, but it was so cold. So cold. Hi, Jean. How are you? Hi, Beverly. Thanks for joining me then, everyone. OK, what I thought for you today um by request actually and it was a request that donna had to demonstrate uh a lovely unusual shaped card um which thank you to donna because it's actually <laughs> increasing my um my knowledge of and my library of shaped cards because you know what i'm like i stick to my usual um square six by six inch cards um so I've sort of come out of my comfort zone a little bit and I've created something a lot more dimensional than I would usually. Um, obviously, there's some stenciling in here as well. So I shall talk you through the dimensions of the card and also through the stenciling. I've used a couple of different products today, something that um, is relatively new. So I've used the T-Rose, which is a gorgeous little um, dinky six by six. I'm sorry. A6 um, embossing folder and stencil set. So that's quite a new one. But what I've done, I've actually paired that with a really old, say it's not really old, but it's, um, it's a set of stencils that Lisa's had in the collection for quite a while now. It's a set of stencils that doesn't have an embossing folder doesn't have a die to it they are purely art stencils when you can tell that by the packaging here they there are two sets the one i'm using today is the layering rose or the layering roses um but there is another set here called the layering fantasy florals so these are really really great for using as backgrounds as i say they don't come well they come just as a stencil set they have three stencils in both sets so I'm using the layer of roses and I thought that just paired really well and would create a really nice background with this beautiful tea rose so I should be using that today also so it's a really nice one just to remind you that this is sitting in the collection as well I've also used the heart stripes so well, I will use the heart stripes um, just to add some embossed detail to the sides of the card and I'm also using the fabulous fonts, the stamps and dies. I'm not sure if this one is in stock at the moment, but you all have lots of Lisa's sentiments, whether they be dies or stamps. So you can mix and match and choose whichever suits your occasion that you're making the card for. OK, as I said, it's a very dimensional card that I'm making today. It's called um, the 
like the kissing fish um card and it was first demonstrated by oh my name where's the name gone out of my head <laughs> oh dear donna help me i've been looking at the name all morning it's demonstrated by um a lady who's on the mixed up craft facebook group honestly my brain has gone what's her name cottrell somebody cottrell oh honestly san san Colcots. <laughs> thank you dawn it i've been saying that over and over in my head all morning and just when i needed it it shot out of my brain just how frustrating is that thank you dawn it was um, demonstrated by sam cottrell so we need to give her the credit um for actually creating this card what i will do later on when the uh, video has finished i will give you a little slide with the dimensions on there as well but i shall show you how it all comes together and obviously we shall use lisa's um, embossing folders and stencils to um, decorate the card Thank you, Donna, Sam Corcott. Honestly, my brain. I, I wonder where it goes sometimes. <laughs> Just when you need it. The... <laughs> oh, dear me. I do even amaze myself at how forgetful I can be at times. OK, so it's actually a really lovely card. And Donna has made a couple of design team samples using this also. So this is where the request has come from um donna actually has put probably the most recent card that she put into the group with this shape was using the the floral heart one of the the latest floral heart which looks stunning on there so i thought i'd just give my little spin on this um because obviously that's when we you know the way we craft we like to put our own spin on things um and make it sort of personal to you so it's a really it's actually a really simple card it looked really um complicated when um i first looked at it and i was uh, say a little bit unsure but it is really straightforward and actually quite fun to put together so i would say i do have a couple of slides which i'll put on or tag on to the end of the video at the end of this but i shall talk you through the dimensions now so if you have a pen and paper to hand, that's great. But if you can't keep up or you haven't got any, don't worry so much. As I say, it'll all be there for you at the end. So what you need to start with are two pieces of card measuring 11 inches by 6 inches. So I've already scored one there, so I shall score the next so along the length of the card here, we need to make our first score at one inch. Then we score again at three and a half inches. Then we score at six inches, seven inches, eight inches, nine inches and ten inches like that so let me just check i don't know if you can see the score lines but you'll see in a moment when i start folding this that it will become apparent so you need to do exactly the same scoring on both of those pieces of card then we need a further two pieces of card again these will both be at the same dimension so this measures five inches by six inches and we score these again at every inch. So we score at one inch. And I should say that we score in along the five inch side of the cardstock here. So we score at one inch, two inches, three inches, and four inches. Okay. And we score both like that. So now what we need to do, we need to fold and burnish each of these score lines. And this is really important. Um, and if you've got the time, I would also say that to turn the fold the opposite way, 
and burnish it as well because that just helps with the folding down of the card and it gives the card um, a really good um, memory, a fold memory. So it, it means that when the card's taken out of the envelope and the recipient opens it up, the card sort of knows what it should be doing without the person um, sort of wondering themselves. So I've scored those two pieces. I should go on and score both of these. It really doesn't take any time at all. And you can see I make the initial fold and just use uh, my fingers just to create that initially. And then I will go back and just use um, a bone folder just to make sure that those creases are super sharp. Now, when I come to construct this card, I do actually use Lisa's glue um, because it gives you that little bit of wiggle room, but it also dries really quick and it's more than strong enough. Excuse me for that noise there. Um, it's more than strong enough to hold this card. But obviously, if at this stage you prefer to use um, tape or your red liner tape, then it would be a good time to, to add that now. Um, you'll see in a second where... I add the adhesive as to where you should put the tape. So I'm just give that a quick burnish down. So I know I've gone quite quick through this, but as I say, I do have the dimensions coming up for you a little bit later on. And I also have the dimensions for the mats and layers for you as well. So. OK, right, you'll see that these this side of the card where we've scored every inch replicates uh, these smaller pieces here. So you can pretty much tell that these are going to be folded in a similar sort of way. Before I start folding, what I need to do is on the on the larger pieces of card where it's scored every inch, I need to take just a tiny slither off of this, the end of this card. Now, it really is um, probably a millimetre or two millimetres. What it does, it just helps in the folding and allowing the cardstock to fold flat like this, okay? If you didn't do that, then there would be an awful lot of bulk and you risk sort of buckling the card when it sort of folds and goes into the envelope. So this just, just prevents that. So, and I will do the same with these pillars in a second. So now that I've done that, I need to fold over two sections here. So fold that over so you have two sections facing up and we put the adhesive on the leading edge that's here. So whether you're using your glue or your tape, this is where you need to put your adhesive. My glue has blocked. There we are. And then we hold that flat and we just need to fold over with the next crease down just across and that just ensures that you get a really um, neat fold and it it folds into the place that you want it to so now I've created that and I stand that up for you we see that we have one of the pillars formed there so we do this on both sides so again we take the last two um, folds here we have them facing up and on this leading edge one this is where we put the adhesive hold that down flat and fold the rest of the card over and just make sure that the glue takes so when we fold that back around again we have our pillar so we have two of those they're identical 
So we come onto these smaller edges, or these smaller pieces, and again, I need to take just, oh, excuse me, I need to take just a tiny sliver off of one end, but obviously because you've got the scoring all the way along, it's going to, you need to make sure that you remember which side you've taken the, the slither off of there. So um, you just, maybe you just want to mark that. And it really is just a tiny amount again, just one or two millimeters. So I put that there and I should do the same on this side. Remembering that I've actually taken the slither off from the right hand side. So really are the smallest of pieces that I've taken off there. And again, we fold these over in exactly the same way. So we fold over the, the two sections on the right hand side and on the leading side again, or the edge. We put our glue in exactly the same way as we did before. Now we fold this piece over. We don't have as much card to fold over, but we do exactly the same. So the whole of that pillar folds flat, which is what we want. And when we stand that up, when the glue's taken, we have our perfectly square pillar. And we do exactly the same on this side. We put our glue on that final section, hold it down flat and fold over the remaining piece. Make sure that glue tapes, or if you're using the tape, then obviously that tapes straight away. So we have our two pillars again. So those should be exactly the same. Now this is where we need to start... Uh, affixing them to the card so we've got the two sides of the card now remember if i just fold this up here we've got our two pillars on this side and this is how the diamond shape that is formed in the center of the card so if i just leave that there if you can see that so we just need to make sure that our cards are sitting in exactly the same way and this is where we want where the folding of the, the creases backwards and forwards really sort of comes into play, particularly down this centre fold and also this one here. So that the card really does move and it's flexible backwards and forwards without too much, um, too much issue. So I'll just make sure that I do that again on this side. Again, the card is actually has a wonderful memory. So once you've done this a couple of times, then it knows sort of pretty much where it should be going, which is quite handy. Okay, now we need to affix these pillars to the other end of the card here. So I'm just figuring out which way I do this. Okay. So we take one of our larger pieces will have the fold that we've created there so you can see the same as neat as it is we want to put that on the inside so we have that facing down then we take one of our single pillars and again we have the crease that's in there we want to put that on the inside of the crease here just to make sure we keep it all neat and tidy so we have our fold there, which means I want to put the glue along this side. So again, glue, whether you're using the glue or the tape, we want to marry this up to this final section, small section here. So we can line it up initially. Then if we stand up that and just make sure that the bottom of the pillar and the bottom of the card sit flat onto the desk here so we know that we've lined that all up perfectly and you can see actually how quick Lisa's glue takes it's you know it's perfect glue actually to create with so we've done that section so we need to do exactly the same here again we need to make sure that the fold that we've created here is going to be on the inside of the card 
the fold on the pillar here we want to put on the inside just to just to hide it and just keep all things neat so we put the adhesive on the back of this pillar here actually i should mention also that i'm using lisa's super smooth card um it's a perfect way to create this type of shaped card it holds its shape really well there's enough rigidity in it to really hold its shape you know it's actually a perfect card to be using it's a joy to work with so we have our two pieces of card the back and the front ready to attach together now what we want to do now Now this back piece, we want, I'll just make sure I've got this sitting right. Okay, what's the way, best way to explain this is, if you put the both pieces flat down onto your desk, so the columns are facing upwards, okay? So we've got the dimension on both sides. We then need to bring these pieces up and attach those back to back you see so the center parts are really um basically it's a back to back thing so the center parts will be in alignment and you've got the panels of the columns um touching as well and it's down the center back of the columns that we want to put the glue because obviously we want to have the dimension of the card in the center so we don't want to glue there. So I'm just putting the glue on the back of the panels. So I shall stand that up again and just marry the, the pillars from both sections together. And by doing it by standing up, you're going to make sure that the bottom of the card is in complete alignment. So we just make sure that that glue takes initially. And what you can do, you can just fold those pillars down and just make sure you get a really good contact with where you've added the glue. And we do the same on this side also. And now, once you know that the glue has taken and cured and gone off, you can create that dimension in the centre of the card. And that is how the card will stand for you. Okay. Hi, Peg, all the way from Indiana. Oh, lovely. Thanks for joining me. Oh, hi, Connie. Oh, don't worry, Connie. You can catch up later. Yeah, it'll be ready on um, on YouTube for you a little bit later on, as I say, and all the dimensions will be there too. So there we have our card base, and it's come together so quickly, um, and that is now ready to decorate. Now, what you could do before you actually attach these two place pieces together, you could create um, an aperture in there to create um, a piece that can be seen on the inside. Once you've got the basics of the card down and once you know where you're going with it, then there's so much more that you can do. Now at this stage, I think, what shall I do? I will put my mats and layers on now. So I've given you the dimensions for the mats and layers. So I've used Lisa's um, satin card. Now this one measures two and a quarter inches by five and three quarters. And I've cut two of those and they will sit on the inside here. Now, if you want to decorate the back as well, then obviously you'd cut four of these, but... We do need to leave a space for the sentiment, of course, but it's entirely up to you. It would be really nice to create a double-sided card. And I know some of you really do go to town with your cards and decorate it so it um, looks beautiful from all sides. So if you were creating the mats and layers for the reverse, then they'd be exactly the same. So we have those sitting there. I've pre-cut the mats and layers for the columns. So these pieces, I've cut eight of these, and these measure three quarters of an inch 
by five and three quarter inches and I will sit them all around the pillars. So I shall attach these on now and then we can get on to the stenciling afterwards. So um, I've cut these out and then I've embossed them with the, the striped heart embossing folder here. Now, the way that I've done this, I cut these into strips first and then I was able to emboss um, probably four or five strips all in one go. If you wanted to do it a different way by um, perhaps you want eight of these by three quarter inches. So perhaps if you wanted to cut yourself a piece of eight inches by five and three quarter inches, um, emboss that and then cut it into your strips, then that would be another way of doing that also. Um, your depends how many of these you'll be making and how you find working with your cardstock. But what I'm going to do, again, I'm not going to decorate the back. So I have three sections here and I shall do this one here. So I'm actually putting four strips on either side. If you wanted to decorate the back also, then you'd need to cut the extra panels for them too. But the way it stands, if I just stand it up for you, so it's really hard to show um, dimension cards with an overhead camera. So I should do my very best. So I have the dimension of the pillow uh, pillar there. So I've decorated three sides plus the one that's going to sit there because when that sits on a mantelpiece, those are the ones that will be visible. Let me just decorate the front and then I'll show you what is left um, on the back. So I'll just put these on quickly. Again, I've used um, Lisa's satin cardstock for this and it embosses so lovely. Um, and the colours that I'm going to use to stencil the rose with the pinks and everything, it'll so it will be so pretty all together. Um, again, here I've used a craft card and I embossed those the details on the craft card also. Um, I haven't used the striped hearts on that one. I used um, one of the leaf leaf embossing folders that I have and then I stenciled the rose onto craft card there with the opaque white ink with just a hint of colour and I really liked that contrast with the white cardstock and the craft on there. So you can see now that I've decorated those pillars if I can stand that up again you've got the chance actually to fold these pillars into whatever shape you want you can either keep them square you can fold them so they're a diagonal shape so that's the card base sorted so if I just turn this around what you have left on the back is available for you to um, decorate or add a panel for you to put your sentiment a printed sentiment I know some of you do like to print sentiments um, print verses out so you've got space to add all of that there and you have like two more panels on the back of the pillars here if you wanted to add um, any sort of decorative paper to that also but I don't think it's necessarily needed so we have that ready to decorate I'm going to add two pieces of Lisa's white cardstock in here a little bit later once I've stenciled the roses onto there. But these two pieces will measure uh, two inches by five and a half inches. And I've just got one of those there and that will sit on the inside. One there and one there. So now that's created, I'm just going to leave that to one side, let all the glue just dry while we get on with our stenciling. So hopefully that makes sense. So with the video later on, you'll be able to um, stop and start and be able to follow, follow that along in your own time. Now I should be using the tea rose and I can start stenciling. 
the decoration for you so it's a lovely lovely little set actually it's um what i didn't realize when i first opened it up to be honest it was um an a6 set so the cute little stencils i really like using this size so i've got myself a piece of cardstock i'm actually going to turn it around this way i find it a little bit easier to use actually so this set the t rose set let me just move that another way has seven stencils it comes together really quick. It's a really large embellishment, actually, but it's um, such a pretty one to stencil. So I'm going to say I'm stenciling onto white cardstock this time, whereas here I used the craft. So can you see the colours I'm using? Let's just move those down a little bit. I'm going to stencil this in the classic pink. Um, there's lots of different ways you'd be able to use this and i think what i might try and do another day is try and create like a, a white rose with like a yellow center um there is a bit of an art to that in using grays um, i think it's really effective so i shall but today i shall use the pink let's just bring that down so you can see all the colors there are we all lined up i think so Okay, so the leaves, I'm using the woodland moss. And I shall probably use um, the smaller stencil brushes mostly because the areas that we need to, to, to cover aren't that big. So the, the woodland moss is, well, as you know, if you've watched me before, is my favourite colour, favourite green to use. And I like to create a darker section at the base of the leaves and then just gradually make that lighter out towards the the ed, the um the outside edge of the leaves it just gives a really nice airbrushed look and it it makes shading really straightforward so what you can do is make sure you cover really lightly and evenly all over the leaf to start with and then if you want to create that darker area at the base of the leaf, just come back in with more ink, but just concentrate on the, the edge of the leaf there. And that will, without too much work, create a darker area at the base of the leaf. So I shall take that away and you can see exactly what I mean there and how much that shade, you know, how the shading really works. So stencil number two is the base of the flower. So antique pink for this. And I do want to keep it quite light, I think. I want to, I don't want it a solid pink colour. So again, I'm still using my stencil brush and I'm going to concentrate initially the colour just around the edges. Um, and that will give the illusion of this, obviously the centre being a lot lighter. And we still get that shade in because I really do like pale roses. I'm quite taken to having roses in my garden this year. And I've got a really beautiful yellow one that flowered and it was, was um, smelled lovely. The scent on it was gorgeous. Um, I might need to move it next year, to be fair, because I planted it in a place that I can't see um, when I'm standing at my kitchen window. <laughs> I should have thought about that initially, I know. But it would give me something to do next summer. So I'm just working around the edge with this antique pink, which is a really gorgeous colour, which mixes so well with the uh, satin pink cardstock that I've just used on the card base there. So I'm just working around the outside. I might leave this top edge fairly pale. It might not look as if I'm adding anything there, but when I take the stencil away, it would be a definite line and it means that along the bottom edge of the flower here uh, it's going to be a lot darker so we've got our shadow uh, and our light source sort of um, apparent there there we are so i shall leave that like that the center of the flower is untouched at the moment but we will have detail 
coming into that in a second. So we can see there just a really faint line at the top there. So we have stencil number three. We can add some more detail now to the flower. So the center of the flower will start getting colored with the pink from there. Um, and I should still go quite light and I shall concentrate the ink from this direction upwards. So the stenciling will progressively get lighter from this side of the stencil to this side. So it's basically from the bottom of the flower up, upwards. Um, that's the way that I like to work actually with most of my stencils and that's the way the, the style I seem to have developed. It's funny when you use the stencil so much, you find yourself um, in the, the frame of mind and adding the ink sort of in similar ways, depending on what stencil you use, even though each stencil design from Lisa is so completely different, you sort of, I think it's subconsciously actually, it's, it's the way that you're, the, um, the brain works sort of make, helps you make sense of the image that you're using. So I shall leave that with the pink there and I shall come in with, um, let me just try with the garden sage actually, just adding some details onto the leaves um, over the woodland moss. So I'm using one of the chunky brushes here, but still able to have that control and add some detail onto the leaves there. I'm taking off some of the um, ink that was on there from there before. So that will give me a really nice blend and just add in a little bit of garden sage. So we can take that away. We've got really lovely detail on the leaf there. Okay. And you can see just how um, the shadowing is coming in and the shading is coming in really well on the rose there. So I'm going to come in and I might use a little bit of Loganberry just on this detail. And I'm going to go really light because it is a darker colour, which is, I think, what we need. And instead of actually colouring the whole of this um, aperture through the stencil with a Loganberry, I'm again concentrating from the left being darker and the right being lighter. And that will add, um, I'm hoping, a nice amount of dimension when I take this away. And with the Loganberry being um, a darker colour, but really complementary to the antique pink, that should give us a nice amount of um, shadow detail on these petals. I'm still keeping an element of white as well. I think that um, really helps when you're stenciling. Um, I really do get quite into this. I mean, I can spend hours doing this and sometimes I forget that you may even be watching me. Um, I find this sort of really, really enjoyable, <laughs> really therapeutic. I don't know about you. Um, there's a lot of you who've been with us for a long time. Um, and hopefully you sort of got familiar and you've got your style when you're stenciling with Lisa's stencils now. It's... I don't know, it's something that just sort of takes your mind off of everything. Well, it does me anyway. Um, this Loganberry is such a pretty colour. It can be pink or it can be purple, depending on what other colours you use around it. And I'm just making sure, I'm just tipping the edge of each of those apertures here with just that little bit more intense colour, just so as we got that good bit of shading coming in. And if you notice, I'm always adding the ink to the stencil material first and brushing it into the aperture. That way I've got control over where I'm adding the ink. And I might just put a tiny bit on the top of the tips of the petals there. Just to add that little bit of detail. And I can do that with a little bit of stippling there as well. Um, okay, if I take that away, 
you can see just how that shading is coming on. Now, stencil number five, we had like the add the veining to the to the flower there. So I'm going to use the ink that's already on the stencil and just push that through. Um, I like to have that relatively subtle just so that it's there and adds um, a nice bit of detail in the background. But again, if you want to do that in a contrast colour or make that as bold as you like, then you can do that also. So that's really subtle in the background there. Now, the centre of the flower, I think what I might do, which I didn't do last time, I might bring in some yellow. Now, bear with me while I find my brush. Uh, yellow, yellow, yellow brush. Where are you? Um, juicy pineapple. Okay. Now I've just changed my mind on this. So juicy pineapple. So I've just found my yellow brush there. Now I'm going to use the ink that may already be on the brush, to be honest, before I add any more, because I don't want it to be really, really bold, but I do want it to be a different colour to the rest of the flower. Actually, there was enough ink on the brush to start with. So yeah, that works really nicely for me. So I'm going to clean this stencil actually. And before I should have done that earlier on. I can do that now. Just wipe that away. So this last stencil we have, stencil number seven, is just the inside of the flower. So I'm gonna add, see what I've got left on my brush. I need a little bit more detail on there. So a tiny bit of juicy pineapple through the center. I'm just going to lift that away. That has added the detail that I need. And just with the Loganberry brush, I'm just brushing from the left upward. So I'm not covering all of the details here, but just add a tinge of pink, which when blended with the yellow there, which is given orange tint. There we are. So that gives a really lovely shaded flower there for us I and mean, you can see with the stencil from Lisa that it was all done in pink as well um, with lighter leaves so there is so many different combinations of colours that you can use you can't really go wrong and it's a really nice opportunity to play so I'm going to leave those out so if you bear with me I shall bring in the embossing folder and the die so we can get this die cut out. Obviously, uh, the die matches what you've stenciled perfectly. So bear with me two seconds. I'm just looking at your comments while I'm cutting there. Um, Beverly says you it's very relaxing with the colouring, isn't it? And do you find that it's actually giving you the confidence to use the inks? And maybe when it comes to stamping that you're more confident in colouring as well. Because I think what this system from Lisa has done and with the inks that she's brought out for us and um, being so easy to use and so easy to blend that it's given a lot more people um, a lot more confidence to use colour in their crafting. I mean, I love stamping, I love colouring, um, but I now that Lisa's brought this system out, it's um, I think I'd be hard pushed to go back to stenciling the way that I used to. It's such a lovely way to add colour to your images. Obviously, it helps that we have um, such pretty designs from Lisa also. <laughs> but just look at that. That rose is just so pretty. Let's put that against the white background. And once you've added that detail on there, um, 
that in itself, if you just put that on a little note card with a little stamp sentiment in itself, that would just be perfect. When you really don't always need to go for um, an elaborate card blank. So we can just put that to one side and I can bring in our layering roses stencils. So I'll put these down here. Now, as I say, there's no dye or embossing folder attached with these. You don't necessarily need it, um, but they create such a lovely background. I've cut my two layering pieces that are going to be the panels that sit in here. Now, because I want them stenciled, and I want them to work well together. I've attached the two layers together just with a little bit of washi tape on the background. So I'm actually stenciling on a larger area. You could, if you wanted, just stencil twice on these smaller areas. Um, that's entirely up to you. Or you could, um, as I say, add the measurements together, stencil, and then cut this down the centre afterwards. So... As with all of Lisa's other stencils, um, these artist stencils are also numbered. So we have the number one, two and three. These are six by six stencils as well. So they cover a really nice area. So I'm just going to move my cardstock into a position that works. Again, you could stencil a six by six piece of cardstock and then cut it down to the size that you want afterwards as well. There's um, lots of different ways of doing this. So my thinking, um, and if I bring this card in, the background is really subtle because I obviously want, I don't want it in to conflict with the detail of the main image there. So my thinking behind this was to use very um, pale, stenciling so i'm using dolphin gray because that's a lovely brown tone to it and i'm using my stencil brush and this initial section which is the base of the whole flower i'm not going to cover completely i'm just going to go around the outside so we get the outline of where the flower is and again like i've done before to you until I remove the stencil, this is going to look so pale, but it will add a really nice base to the, to the background. Now, I think there's a, a real good case that if you were to go really bold with this, it would work better than sort of going really um, somewhere between sort of pale and bold. If you're going to go really bold and go for it, then I'd say go fully bold or you go pale, <laughs> um, if that makes sense. Um, I choose to go sort of paler and more subtle. That's sort of the way that my eye works when I'm creating something like this. But there I've seen other people go fully bold when you're creating a background and it works equally as well. And I just wish sometimes I was... Um, brave enough to do that but I'm just adding the dolphin grey just around the outside of these larger apertures here and uh, when I take this away you'll see the effect that that has again it's really really subtle if I take that away You can see now where each of the rose heads are going to be. But again, it's so subtle. Let me just bring that up to the camera a little bit, if that can cope. You can see that the centre of the flowers are still very pale. So stencil number two, we bring in the detail, obviously. So again, I'm just going to go around the outside of each area with the dolphin grey, not adding too much more ink but it will add the detail and a hint of where the rose petals are going to be. And just go around this way. And I'm doing the same on each of the rose sessions here. Now, depending if this was just going to be the only stencil detail on your card, then these roses are just gorgeous. To stencil and then if you're adding a real nice bold sentiment over the top 
it's such a quick card. It's really good for your batch making. So if I can just show you again just how subtle that is coming along. And the last layer, so stencil number three, I'm going to change from the dolphin grey and come in with the antique pink. And this is where I'm just going to add a, the touch of colour, which will just tie it all in together with the main focal image. So you can either use your stencil brush or you can use a... your blending brush, which I might use my blending brush on this one. And I'm just going to concentrate on putting the pink color in the center of each of these flower heads. Now, the concentration of the color will be in the center, but obviously as it works onto the outside, it will catch the rest of the detail. But it will be sort of airbrushed, an airbrushed look as it moves away from the center. And this will add just a tiny bit of colour. And this antique pink and the dolphin grey work so well together. So well together. They look so pretty. So I'm going to add the detail in the centre of the flowers. And this is what will tie in with our main tea rose at the, as the main focal image. So if I can take that away, it's really subtle, really subtle in the background there. But if I just move that away and move that up to you, you can just see that it does create a really pretty background. Now, I've just washi taped these two pieces together. So I can hopefully just remove that gently. Just take that washi tape away. There we are. So we have our two panels, which are now separated, but they're still connected because of the um, continuous pattern that goes across. I can bring my card blank in and fold it flat so it gives me opportunity to add these on. And now I can glue these panels on. Now my glue is... So I think this just gives a really nice subtle detail and um, with the subtle embossing that's sitting on the pillars here, I think it's just a really nice combination which will really make our main tea rose sort of really shine out. So we can add those there. Let's put the lids back on those in a second, otherwise I'm going to get ink everywhere. I can be clumsy. Okay, we don't want to spoil it now at this stage. Okay, so we have our card base, which looks now looks lovely with those sitting on there. And you can see now that the pink is so subtle, but it is really picked out by the satin card here. And we want our it keeps folding. I'll worry about that in a second. We want to have our tea rows in the centre there. And you can see now that we really do want why we wanted that so subtle in the background. Now, to add our embellishments on here, obviously, it's quite a dynamic card. So we there is just an extra little bit of cardstock that we need to attach these, like little, um, little hinges. So the main measurement that I will give you for this is three inches, which will always stay the same. But I would say just to, I've cut this initially at an inch, but the depth of this little hinge will be dependent on the size of the embellishment that you're putting onto the card. So it will always be three inches long. That works really well. Say um, this is all worked out by Sam from uh, Mixed Up Craft. So she's done the work on this for us. Um, we need to score along the three inches at half an inch, one and a quarter inch, one and three quarters, and two and a half. As I say, I will have a slide on this um, at the end for you. 
So the depth on this will depend on the embellishment that you're putting on. So this is quite a large embellishment. So you can afford for this hinge just to be that little bit longer. But obviously, if you add in um, a smaller sentiment, then the depth on that is going to be a little bit smaller. So you might just want to slice that um, a little bit in half. And you need to cut as many of these as embellishments that you're putting on the front of the card. So the majority of the time, it will be two, two hinges. So with that in mind, I've actually created this one hinge that will sit on the back of the rows because that rose is a lot larger. So I can cut that one down in a second. I've cut a second hinge here that will sit behind my sentiment. Now this one I've already cut to size. And what we need to do, I've just for ease, um, just to demo for you, I've added um, a piece of red tape in the center section of these hinges. So by the time that you folded these down, the two, you need to fold the two flaps round to the back. This is what's going to attach to the card. So you have three panels sitting on the front and it's the center one that you want to add your adhesive to. So we just need to place this initially without any glue, just so as we get the positioning correct so we'll have that sitting off to the side there now this one the rows i want to sit probably let me just think the rows will have sitting like that i'm going to cut this one down just a little bit because it was a, a little bit too wide um i think just by eye that would work. So I've just taken a little section off of there and I will have the rows sitting on that one around about there. So I can just see that hinge sitting underneath the rows. So we want to have that hidden. So I've just moved that up a little bit. So now keeping that in position, I've on this end flap here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue. And I'm just gonna hinge that behind. And attach that to the card flat like that. Then I can fold out the other section here. And I can add my glue there. Then I can fold that back and attach that to the card also. And I know that that's still going to be in the position that I want my rose to sit at. So I shall put that there before I attach that. I'm just going to make sure that I'm in the same, in the right position for my sentiment. So that they don't overlap. So I'm going to add the glue to both ends of this hinge here. Just flip them behind. And I want that sitting just about there for my sentiment. I just measure the sentiment again just to make sure that it's all lined up. Now this little bit does take a little bit of time but it's worth just persevering. And when we put these hinges on, what we want them to do is actually go across that center line of the card. So when the card folds out, it will, that hinge will just go with the center line of the fold. So it does take a little bit of just fiddling about, but it's worth just persevering with that. Okay. Now, because I've got the tape on these, it just makes it easy for me to add the embellishments for you. There is no reason why you can't add glue to these bits. 
So I'm just going to take the liner tape off of those without taking the, there we are. Okay, it's a little bit tricky. So I can just, <clears throat> add, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> I can add my rose and then I can add my sentiment just like so. Obviously, we just need to make sure that they're positioned so the edge of the rose doesn't go below where the card would sit on the on your desktop and it's not going to affect the fold of these pillars like that. So we can just add that down. So when the card is sitting up, you have the embellishment sitting on the front layer like that. Again, if you was using glue, then obviously you just left to let the glue just um, dry a little bit before that comes off because the amount of space, the contact from the embellishment onto the hinge is minimal, but it's more than enough once the glue and the adhesive is, has dried. So when you fold this card down into the envelope, so you can either have an envelope this size. Now, it could be that you use one of your larger envelopes for this. You could also fold these pillars so it sits under your embellishments like so. And you're folding then the burnishing that you've done earlier on will really come into play. And you're, you just make sure that that's all folded down now that we have the extra layers on. So that would also be another way that that can fit um, slightly less length to fit into the envelope, but it's a real showstopper when it's taken out of the envelope. If you find that you don't have any envelopes to size, then obviously you might be able to make your own envelope to suit. So that's the Kissing Fish card, um, made in two different ways. They look completely different um, in the two different colorways, using exactly the same things, but different embossing folders. So hopefully that construction of the card is really clear to you. Again, I will put up the dimensions of the card for you. But that's a really effective and it makes a really nice showstopper of a card. So I shall love you and leave you for this afternoon. I'm aware I've gone on probably a little bit longer than I normally would. So I hope... Um, you've enjoyed that. I'll be back with you on Thursday. I'm not sure what I'm doing just yet, but I shall see you all then. And thanks so much for joining me. If you hang around, I shall just put up the links for the dimensions of the card for you. So thanks, everyone. And I shall see you again soon.